Hey guys, welcome back to Beach and Fishing. Paul here with you again today. And Beach and Fishing is my site and channel aimed at everything to do with the world of fishing, the beach, camping, four wheel driving, whatever it is that we are discussing at the time. So we're going to continue our little debate section that I have, or debate series I have, whether when I talk about you know certain thing versus certain other thing. I've looked at bait versus lures, uh, bait caster versus spinning reels. Today we're going to talk about braid versus mono or monofilament fishing line. Now, fishing line is something that obviously we all need whenever we get ourselves a little a reel. We need to put some fishing line on it, which is what the fish hook up to. Um, all different type shapes and sizes. So this one's a little spinning reel I've got. I've got some braid on that with a mono leader. That one's a big LV surf reel that I use and it has some mono line on it. So what are the differences between the two to start with? Let's start with that. So let's start with mono. This is actually fluorocarbon, but um, mono, same sort of thing. Think of mono as the traditional fishing line that we all got as kids. So when you were a kid, you were given this fishing rod, and I dare say that, especially if you're not as young as others like me, um, the fishing line you were given, and this is now going nuts on this, so I'll just put that down and work over it. The fishing line you're given would have been a mono line green. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but a green fishing line, generally uh, a nylon type line, very easy to use, you can tie your knots with it, um, doesn't tangle very much, and that's what we all used. Generally made of, um, as I say, a nylon type compound. Then we get into fluorocarbon, which has some different compounds. I've written in the post what fluorocarbon is. Um, do, 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 do. It's just made with different, I didn't write exactly what it was, and I, uh, hang on, let me, See if I can tell you what fluorocarbon is. Um, it's got more compounds, uh, carbon and fluorine. Um, so it's basically the nylon with all extra stuff in, <laughs> in simple terms. I should have got that ready beforehand, shouldn't I? But fluorocarbon is, let's call it the new mono. Um, but it's all the same stuff. It's it's a nylon, um, what does it say, carbon and polyurethane stuff. Fluoro is a bit, is, um, it tends to be clear. They come in all colours. Uh, I was watching a guy the other day, he was using red mono and swears by it. He reckons he's caught way more fish since he's used red. I like clear myself. Um, that's just a personal preference. Um, and it depends where you are. It depends what colours fish like and don't like. If you're fishing out in the ocean where we fish, sometimes you get phosphorus in the water and that, um, as you see in TV shows, phosphorus, little bits of little light things. Um, and that sticks to braid. So we tend to use mono out there now because it the, the phosphorus doesn't stick to the mono as much and it stops the fish from seeing the line. But anyway, so that's your mono. Braid, on the other hand, is a, think of braided hair. It's a whole lot of strands of a um, more material type stuff, although some of them are a, a little nylon thing as well or some uh, fluorocarbon type um, compound, but it, they, they're braided together to form you to form a, um, a line. So there's, and you can, you'll see often in, um, I don't know if I've got any, here we go, I've got one up here. Uh, braid times nine means there's nine little strands in that braid. This one doesn't tell me what it is. I think this is, this is only a cheapie, this one, but um, yeah, it's, so you, it, the number, you, if you have a look on the box, quite often they'll say, I haven't got any others around here, but quite often they'll say the number of strands. So by nine, so this got nine strands. Um, yeah, and that's the main difference. It's generally thinner than mono, and it's generally a lot stronger for the width than mono as well. So this is 30 pound, this braid here. This mono here, and I, I know you can't see in the video, this mono here is 20 pound. It's almost double as thick as what the braid is. And that's something that a lot of people like because they, you can put, effectively that means you can put more line on a spool. And if you've got a bait caster, some, um, some spinners will have it on there as well. I think this one actually has it on there. So it'll say that you can fit for 10 pound mono, you can fit 300, 300 um, yards on here. 
if it was a braid city, it would probably say something like for 30 pound braid, you can put 300 yards. So you can get a lot more, see where here it says 20 pound mono is only 120 yard. If I had a 20 pound mono, I guarantee I could put the three full 300 yards on this. This is, this I think is a 25, the 30 pound mono and it's over 300 yards worth on this, on this reel here. So that's, you know, the main thing we're, we're talking about there. So to be honest, a lot thinner, a lot stronger for the size than the mono. But what are some other things to look at? So if we look at our, our debate between the mono and the braid, if we look at mono, mono is stretchier. So, I mean, it's not gonna to tell too much here, but it, it's got a, a good stretch to it. It is easier to use. If you've got this on a line, you can just snip off a bit of the end, tie your swivel on, tie your swivel on, tie your hook on, off you go. It's a lot easier to manage. It does not tangle as much as braid. And if it does tangle, it's a lot easier to untangle than braid because braid's so thin. It's like getting cotton knot. Try getting, tying a knot in cotton, getting that undone. As opposed to this, you can tie, the knot gets in this. It's a lot easier to, to, um, to use. It's generally, it used to be a lot cheaper than braid. And I've written in the post that it's generally cheaper, but to be honest, it's not these days. Braids come down a lot in price and it tends to be not that much more expensive, but it's the quality. And I'm always an advocate if you pay, if you go to the, the $2 bin and get yourself a, a roll of $2 line, it's not gonna be as effective for you as if you go and get a better quality. So that's my one piece of advice, rather, regardless of what you get. Um, it doesn't sink as fast as braid. It's a lot stretchier. So if you're casting, um, lures it'll it'll bounce across the line a lot quicker if you narrow your snags and you've got if you've got a little pull in the in the line it tends to allow you to get our snags a lot better than braid does because it's got that stretch to it so if you're doing any sort of fishing where you want stretch um this is what you go for mono if you're a beginner just go mono don't even think about braid to start with uh the disadvantages obviously it's um it's bigger, so you can you generally won't fit as much on a reel with that strength as you will um, braid. This is a 20 pound fluorocarbon, and it's still a little bit thicker than the 30 pound braid I've got here. So you won't fit as much on a line. It's not as um, abrasion resistant, meaning that if it rubs against rocks and stuff, it tends to um, get little chinks and stuff in it more than what braid will, which means it'll snap a lot easier. And it also holds shape. So as I pull that out, you can see that's got a little bit of a, a round, and put it against my shirt so you can see it against the dark. You can see it's still got that little bit of um, curl to it. So it holds shape, which means it doesn't, if really long casting is what you're after, then mono tends to not work as well for that reason it holds that, that line. But if you're a beginner, or you are looking for something that has good low um, visibility. If you're trolling for large fish, so if you're trolling big lures out the back, chasing the large fish, then a really strong 80 pound mono will do the trick for you there. But as I say, the disadvantages, um, not as abrasion resistance in general, uh, you can't hold as much on a line, holds its shape and not as strong for what the, the size of it is. So then we get to braid. So the braid is, um, as I've mentioned, it's thinner, so you can fit more on a line, a higher strength on the same spool and more of it on the same spool. So if you're chasing, if you want some really good um, strong line, it's longer lasting than mono. It doesn't tend to deteriorate. It loses its color in the sun and loses its color with use. So you can see that, I don't know if you can see that there, um, this isn't this brand, but it was the same color when I got it. And I don't know if you can see that in the, if I get that up to the light, um, that isn't as bright as that. So it does lose its color, but it doesn't tend to lose its, um, its shape as much. That said, I had a, I was fishing the other day and I could see where it had pulled, like the, it had just, uh, one, a couple of strands had broken and you could see that it was thinner in the middle and thicker on the end. And I looked at it and looked at it and looked at it and thought, yeah, yeah, she'll be right. Big fish hit, snapped the whole line. So it does happen, just need to watch for that. Um, 
it won't doesn't hold a shape as much this one's been there for a while so see if I pull that out see how it doesn't have that that circular even if I go like if I go like that it will but see it hasn't got that that circular pattern that the that the mono had so it doesn't hold its shape which means it tends to be a little bit better for casting so if you really want to cast a long long way put some braid on because it doesn't hold that that line it doesn't hold that shape and it'll go from there and it's more uh, abrasion resistant and the like what I don't like about braid is a as I mentioned before if you tangle it you're stuffed um, that's a technical term by the way um, I put it on a bait caster and just to end up doing my head in because if you get the, the backlash on a bait caster this stuff is really hard to untangle it um, if it gets a little knot in it you've got to basically cut it all out and start again um, Generally, you'll need a mono line, a mono leader on it anyway, because braid has no stretch, which is really good if you, going back to the pros of it, if you're in an area where you need to stop a fish fast, and that by that I mean if you're in an area, um, you'd have to do it in some areas where you chase largemouth and smallmouth bass. Uh, we have it here when we chase uh, bass in our creeks, um, barramundi, mangrove jack, etc., which hide under the... Um, in the, amongst the mangrove roots, and you need to stop them fast because if you don't, they're in on the mangroves, they'll snap you off on the branches. So braid is great for that because there's no stretch. So if you need to stop something fast, braid is what you need to do because there's no stretch. That said, quite often, because it's so thin, it's really hard to tie knots and knots. Um, I've been practicing with knots and I'll, I'll do another post once I've got it worked out properly. I saw a Pinterest pin of all things the other day about tying braid knots and I've been playing with it and I haven't got it right yet. Um, but if I try and tie that directly under hook, which you can do with all your clinch knots and all that sort of stuff, um, if you are going to use braid, I recommend just doing a um, one I've found. If I've been out in the water and I've had to do it quickly, I just tie the braid over into a, into a loop like that. and then just feed that through the end of the hook and and work it that way. That's the best way I've found to use braid um, if I want to tie it directly to the hook. Although you can feel that's, that's slipping now, even just in my in my tiny little arms pulling that. So you need to be careful. And that for that reason, most times you'll need to put a mono leader on it and that involves a whole nother knot. Uh, I've got another reel here where I, I've got a that's mono onto the braid and you can't see it but there's a knot on there have a look at my um, post on fishing knots but most times you'll need a mono leader on the braid anyway because it just gives you that little bit of stretch when the fish bite because again there's no there's no stretch on braid so if you've got a mono leader on it just does give you that little bit so the, you know one of the disadvantages of that obviously then is you do need a need to put a mono leader on it anyway. On my f ocean fishing reels like this one here, I've got 30 pound mono, and uh, 30 pound braid, sorry, and 40, uh, 50 pound mono leader. And that gives me a bit of stretch, uh, especially if I don't need to stop the fish straight away because I'm pulling it up off the bottom. So it's just against that original, original tug. Um, as I say, it's, it's not as easy to tie. You need the mono leader and it can be harder on your gear as well because there's no give and no stretch your gear is doing all the work. So it's going to pull on your reels a lot harder than what the little bit of give of a mono will do. But no, apart from that, it sinks a bit faster. It's good for using light lures uh, because of the lighter lighter line. And it's also good if you, if you need to be accurate. So as I mentioned, if you're fishing around structure and you need to stop a fish fast in that structure, braid is definitely the, the way to go. Um, if you're in weedy areas and you just need the brute force to pull it through, it can work there as well. So that's the outlines that do, the pros and cons of both. I mean, I haven't read that word for word. You can read all that in a post. Which one do you choose? My rule of thumb is if you're just doing general day-to-day -day fishing where you're tying just general um, running sinker rigs or you need to tie onto on and off of swivels and the like, or you are fishing where you want to tie some lines and, and put hooks on and off, I would be going mono 
Um, if you're going for extra large things where you want a little bit of give in your line, go mono. If you want extra stopping power, extra strength, and you're a bit more experienced with your knots because you will need to <coughs> excuse me, get your knots together for attaching your mono to your braid and all that, again, have a look in my knots post. I think it's called the three best not three the only three knots I use illustrated. Have a look for that post in the in the thing. I'll put the link in here. Um, then you can um, you can tie them together. But that's basically the difference between the two. And as I say, if you're a beginner or just want some easy fishing, bit of stretch, chasing fish that you're trolling that you need a bit of give, go your mono. If you want some real stopping power or a bit of extra sensitivity, or um, you need something that's going to stop a fish or cast accurately, go your braid. That's it guys. I know that was probably clear as mud. I went back and forth amongst all, the, all of it there. I use both. Um, I like the, scent, the toughness of the braid on a line. I like feeling the braid on this when I get a fish. But I also like, I've been experimenting with mono on a couple of my um, rods. I put mono, I bought a really small... Um, I haven't got the reel here, but I bought a small Shimano Nasky 1000 recently for the kayak and I put mono on it and it's fantastic. I mean, you can actually feel the the pull on it on a little reel. It's really good fun. But I didn't experience that on this one with the braid. It just, it just pulled. Anyway, that's my experience. Hope that was helpful for you. If you're watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe to the channel below. If you're watching within the post, let me know what you use. Or in YouTube, let me know what you use. I'd love to know what you use. I'd love to know why you use it and what your experiences with both are, comment below, and let's have a chat about it. Okay guys, thanks for that, chat you soon, bye.